one of the most important functions in algebra and turns out one of the most important functions in calculus is the function of a line. So our question for today is going to be how do we represent the function for a line? And the big thing we're really interested in, especially in calculus, is the slope of the line, which is just a measure of the steepness of the line. And this should be review for you the formula for the slope of a line is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which we can change to function notation because y's are simply the f of x result. We could say that's really f of the x2 minus f of the x1 over x2 minus the x1. And graphically, we think about this as the rise over the run or delta y over delta x, where delta means change. So we're talking about the change in y divided by the change in x. These formulas all really mean the same thing. So let's see if we can look at a couple examples working with slope. First, we're going to find the slope between the points negative 3, 2, and negative 1, negative 6. Well, going to our slope formula, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If we consider our first point as x1, y1, and the second point as x2, y2, we're simply doing the subtraction, negative 6 minus 2, subtracting the y's, divided by negative 1 minus a negative 3. And so then we're just simplifying that to get negative 8 over 2, which reduces to negative 4. And we can kind of change the style of the problem, but still asking the same question. We can find the slope between the point x and 2y and the point 4x and 8y. And again, if we consider the first point as an x1, y1, and the second point as an x2, y2, we're just plugging into that slope formula, y2, which is 8y, minus y1, which is 2y, divided by x2 of 4x minus x1 of x. And when we subtract there, we'll end up with 6y over 3x. And the 6 over 3 will reduce to 2y over x becomes our slope. We can extend this idea and put full functions in for our points. We can find um, the x-coordinate if the slope between 3 comma 7 and x comma x squared minus 2 is negative 4. Well, our slope we know is negative 4, and that's equal to the difference in the y's divided by the difference in the x's. So we have x squared minus 2 subtract the other y of 7 over x minus 3. And to solve this, let's clear the fraction by multiplying both sides by the x minus 3. And that's going to give us negative 4x plus 12 equals x squared minus 9. And if I scroll a bit to get some work space, we can subtract everything to the other side. So we have x squared plus 4x minus 21. 
and factor that to x plus 7, x minus 3. And setting each factor equal to 0, we get x is equal to negative 7 and positive 3 are our two possible x coordinates that give us a slope of negative 4. We could even extend this idea of slope out and ask to find f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. That's basically the slope formula with a full function, like f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 7. Well, f of b means we just have b squared plus 4b minus 7. And f of a means we just have a squared plus 4a minus 7. And so when we want to subtract these, we're saying the slope is f of b, the b squared plus 4b minus 7, minus the f of a, which is a squared plus 4a minus 7, all over the b minus the a. Well, this gives us some simple algebra to work out. We'll distribute the negative. And our slope is equal to b squared plus 4b minus 7 minus a squared minus 4a plus 7 all over b minus a. And that's nice because the negative 7 and the positive 7 subtract out to 0. And if we do a little bit of a rearrangement of the terms, we'll keep b squared minus a squared together and the positive 4b minus the 4a together over b minus a. What we find is interesting there is we can factor the left side and the right side. The left side's a difference of squares, b minus a times a, b plus a. The right side, we factor out a 4, leaves behind a b minus a all over b minus a, which becomes really nice because both terms have a b minus a factor. And so we can factor out that b minus a factor. Oops, uh, one of those should be a b plus a. That was a difference of squares. By factoring out the b minus a factor, we're left with b plus a plus a 4 over b minus a. And those b minus a's reduce out. And so what we end up with is our final slope is b plus a plus 4. So a little bit of algebra to simplify as we find that slope, but not too difficult. Well, now that we've gotten comfortable with our review of slope, we're ready to jump then to the real question, which is what is the equation of a line? And there are several ways we can do the equation of the line. The most common, most popular, and possibly most useful is what's called the slope-intercept equation of a line, which is y equals the m times x plus b, where m represents the slope of the line and b represents the y-intercept, or the starting point of the line. So for example, if we are told that there is a line with a slope of 3 halves and a y-intercept of negative 2, we can put that together to come up with the equation of the line, which is y equals the slope 3 halves times x plus the b of negative 2 
And this becomes the equation of the line with that given slope and given y-intercept. Actually, let's call this one next one b. We could also give a problem like 3x plus 2y equals 6 and try and graph this equation. Well, it's difficult to graph in its current form because we don't know the slope and the y-intercept. So to start doing that, we're going to solve for y to make it a y equals. And we'll start by subtracting the 3x from both sides, giving us negative 3x plus 6. And then when we divide by 2, we get y equals negative 3 halves x plus 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now I'm ready to make a graph for this equation because I have all that necessary important information to help me make a graph of what this picture of solution should look like. We know the y-intercept is at 3. And the slope says we're going to go down 3 and over 2 to get to our next point. And so when I connect those dots, we end up with the line the picture of solutions for 3x plus 2y equals 6. So that's slope intercept. Usually, though, we don't get to go straight to point intercept. We have to start with what's called point slope form first. And point slope form is written as y equals m times x minus the x coordinate of a point plus the y-coordinate of a point. Because normally, we might be able to find the slope, and we've got another point. That point just doesn't happen to be a, a y-intercept. And so we have to start with point slope form. For example, if we had the point of negative 2 comma 5 given to us, and we're told that the slope of the line is 3 halves, we should be able to build the equation of the line and then tweak it to get it into slope-intercept form like we had in number 1 up above. So that would be y equals the slope of 3 halves times x minus the x-coordinate, which is negative 2. Minus a negative makes it a positive 2, plus the y-coordinate, which is 5. From here, we can do a little bit of algebra to get it into slope-intercept form so we know where this graph starts. Distributing the 3 halves through, we get y equals 3 halves x plus 3 plus 5. Combining like terms, y equals 3 halves x plus 8. And now we should be able to graph this guy. We know that the graph is going to start at the y-intercept of 8. And then the slope tells us it's going to rise 3 and run 2 to get to the next point. And we could even use that backwards and say we rise backwards 3 and run backwards 2 to get maybe a couple points. And we can kind of see that this graph is going to continue going down 3 over 2 in that direction. And we have our graph in point slope form. Now, normally, when we're working with a problem where we need the equation of the line, we actually have two points, maybe negative 4 comma 1 and negative 2 comma 5. And the big important thing that you see we're missing is we don't know what the slope is. But fortunately, we do have a slope formula. The slope formula tells us we can subtract the y's, 5 minus 1, over subtracting the x's, negative 2 minus a negative 4 becomes plus 4. And so we have 4 over 2, which reduces to 2. Now we have a slope. And we can use either point. I just like to use the first point to build our line. y equals the slope of 2 
times x minus the x-coordinate, which is a negative 4, makes it plus 4, plus the y-coordinate, which is 1. And then we have an equation in point slope form that we can quickly distribute to get 2x plus 8 plus 1 and combine like terms to get y equals 2x plus 9 in slope intercept form. Now, there's a third thing we should be aware of as we're working with equations of lines. And that's this idea of intercepts. And we've already talked about the y-intercept kind of loosely, but we never really defined it. An intercept is where the graph crosses the x or y axis, where it crosses the x-intercept. Where it crosses the x-axis is called the x-intercept. Where it crosses the y-axis is called the y-intercept. And so if we had a function like 6x minus 2y equals 24, if I wanted to find the x-intercept, the way we do that is we make the other variable equal to 0. We make y equal to 0. And so we have 6x minus 2 times 0 equals 24. Well, 2 times 0 is just 0, so that's really 6x equals 24. And dividing both sides by 6, we find the x-intercept is 4. So we know we cross the x-axis at 4, and we can find the y-intercept by making the other variable 0 x equals 0. And in much the same way, we have 6 times 0 minus 2y equals 24. Well, 6 times 0 is 0, so negative 2y equals 24. And dividing by negative 2, y is equal to negative 12 becomes the y-intercept. And sometimes that's helpful to help us graph, uh, quick, graph lines quickly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x's, because we know the x-intercept is at 4. And the y-intercept at negative 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, becomes the y-intercept. And we can then connect those intercepts to get a good idea of the shape of the graph. We could go the other way, though. I could tell you that I know the intercepts and ask you what the equation is. We could look for the equation with x-intercept of 2 and y-intercept of negative 5. So we really have two points hidden in here. The x-intercept means the other variable is 0. So the y is 0 when the x is 2. The second point is very important to us because we know the y-intercept is going to be the b in our equation. The y-intercept is when the other variable x is 0, and the y is that negative 5. All we're missing then is a slope. And we can put this in slope-intercept form. So our slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which becomes negative 5 halves. So the equation of our line is y equals m, negative 5 halves, times x plus the y-intercept, which is negative 5. And that quickly, we have the equation of the line that has an x-intercept of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 5. So that's kind of how we work with equations of lines. I do want to add one thing to this video lesson, though, that's kind of related, because we're mostly going to be working with lines. And that's this idea of what is called a piecewise function. or functions 
that change based on the domain. Here's what I mean by that. Let's say I want to graph a picture of the solutions to g of t is equal to, and we do a little bracket because there's two options for the function. It's going to be 3 halves t plus 7 if the t is less than or equal to negative 2. And it's going to be t squared if the t is greater than negative 2. So this means, depending on the domain, whether we're smaller than 2 or bigger than 2, we're going to use a different function. The graph is going to change shapes on us. So let's uh, see what we can do here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we'll go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Probably a little too much graph. So to get an idea of what's happening with the graph, I might start by plugging 0 into the function. When I plug 0 in, you notice 0 is bigger than negative 2. So that's actually going to be 0 squared, which is 0. So when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, 1 is bigger than negative 2. So that's 1 squared equals 1. When x is negative 1, still bigger than negative 2. So we'll have negative 1 squared, which equals a positive 1. So when x is negative 1, we have a positive 1. Let's plug 2 in. Well, 2, again, is bigger than negative 2. So we'll use the t squared. 2 squared is equal to 4. So we have 2 comma 4 for a point. But now when x is negative 2, now we're less than or equal to negative 2. Now we're going to use the first function to describe what happens. Well, that's going to be 3 halves times negative 2 plus 7, which gives us negative 3 plus 7, which is 4. And we're actually going to use the fact that the 3 halves is the slope. But we need to go backwards with the slope. We need to go to smaller numbers. So I'm going to go backwards 3, backwards 2, which goes 1, 2, 3, backwards 1, 2 to get another point. And what we see is the blue dots are going off with this straight line. I'm sorry, those are the green dots. The blue dots, however, make our familiar parabola shape. And it keeps the parabola shape until we get to that negative 2. And so there's not actually a break in this graph. It just changes direction as it changes functions, depending on where we are in the domain. That's a piecewise function. It does two different things based on the domain. Let's do another one. Let's try and graph. We'll call it f of s is equal to 1 third of s plus 3 if s is less than 3, and 2s minus 3 if s is greater than or equal to 3. And let's see what graph we end up with here. Well, let's start with the less than 3, because 0 is less than 3. So that one's going to actually include the y-intercept. And we know the y-intercept is at 3. Then we're going to rise 1 and run 3. But you notice what happens there is now we're actually equal to that s value of 3. And it doesn't want to actually equal 3. We'll use an open dot to show it's going to get infinitesimally close to that point at 3. But because the or equals 2 is actually on the second equation, 
Let's plug 3 into the second equation to figure out what's happening there. Plugging 3 in, we have 2 times 3 minus 3, which is 6 minus 3, or 3. So when x is 3, y is 3, we'll use a solid dot to show it's actually equal to that point. And then we can use our slope to show it rises 2 and runs 1 to get our next point. And what we see is with this piecewise function, there's a little jump in the graph. Not a big jump. Sometimes it might be a big jump. But it's not connected like the previous graph was. And as we compare these two graphs that we're talking about here in examples 1 and 2, this is going to be really interesting to us later in this chapter when we talk about whether or not we can draw the whole function without lifting our pencil, or if we have to lift our pencil because there's a jump or some kind of change in the piecewise function. But we're not quite there yet. So for now, we'll just acknowledge that that's interesting, and we'll come back to it in another video. But for now, the reason we want to hit, hit these piecewise functions in our functions about lines and slopes is this idea of absolute value. And the idea of absolute value, you know, is it looks at the distance a value is from 0, which means we're going to be particularly interested in finding the point where the inside is 0, because things will change at that point. So if g of x is equal to the absolute value of 3x plus 6, I'm really curious when that inside stuff is going to be 0, because that's when things are going to change. So when does 3x plus 6 equal 0? Well, if I subtract 6 and divide by 3, I find out that's when x is equal to negative 2. So that then starts to build my piecewise function g of x, where it's going to be one thing if it's positive, and another thing if it's negative. Now, absolute value we know doesn't really change things if x is positive. And notice if we pick a value bigger than negative 2, maybe 0, if I plug 0 into the x, the inside stays positive. So that means the absolute value of a positive is just that number. So the 3x plus 6 stays like it is if x is bigger than or equal to that negative 2. What changes is if I plug a value like negative 3 in, because now the absolute value of 3 times negative 3 plus 6 becomes negative 9 plus 6 becomes the absolute value of negative 3. And so we have to change the sign to make it a positive 3. And so that's what we're going to do on the second half, is we're going to show a changing the sign with a minus sign, saying take the opposite of the 3x plus 6 if x is less than the negative 2. And this way, we can break an absolute value down into a piecewise function so we can take a look at graphing the function. So we know that uh, the first graph hits 0, because 0 is bigger than negative 2. So we'll use the first graph and the fact that the y-intercept is 6 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, to get our first point. Using the slope of 3 over 1, I can go down 3 and over 1. And we're going to do that again all the way down to negative 2, which is another down 3 over 1. And so the first part becomes this nice straight line. But now when x is less than negative 2, the slope is now a negative 3. So it's going to go the other direction, giving us the familiar v shape of the absolute value. 
And so an absolute value really is a piecewise function, which is going to be nice for us down the road when we're asked to do some calculus with absolute values. It's difficult to work with an absolute value in calculus. It's not too bad to deal with the piecewise function. So we're going to look today also not just at slope, rates of change, and equations of lines, but how do we work with piecewise functions and change absolute values into piecewise functions. So take a look at those on the homework. Spend some time with those and practice them. And then in class, we'll talk about it further and look at some applications of these lines as we continue our review of pre-calculus. We'll see you in class.